In this video, I will show you simple leaf painting tutorial using watercolors. We will practice realistic painting with watercolors. An outline drawing is done, which is available for download. And the exact amount of graphite is removed with elastic eraser. Now we can start mixing watercolors. Adding water to color palette. First mix sap green. This will be a darker mix for the shadow areas. Ultramarine blue. Adding more sap green. We need a vivid dark green color. Perlin green. and a little bit more of sap green. For the second I'm placing ultramarine blue and this will be for the lightest parts. Just clean ultramarine blue, very small amount. And the third one, sap green with lemon yellow. A little amount of ultramarine blue. Now I will show you on one leaf example how to paint this beautiful composition adding water to the surface just enough for watercolors to be moved i'm not adding too much water nothing is dripping or flowing away from the paper just enough for the paper to be moist looking at reference and starting from the darkest area I'm taking a small amount of darker pigment, which is sap green, ultramarine blue and perlin green using fine tip brush. And first layer is still very transparent compared to the reference that we see that it's very saturated and dark. Still the first layers are very light. I'm applying watercolor starting from the shadow area and spreading while the surface is wet towards the lightest parts. In the beginning, it is important to keep light areas bigger, wider than they appear in the reference. After a few layers, that area will become smaller and smaller, and finally, till the end, it will reach the required size. But it is important to keep the light light. In this composition, with these leaves, this is very important to have this contrast between light and dark. This is the main here, what catches viewer attention and gives a realistic look as well as curved view of these leaves. Taking sap green with lemon yellow, adding to the half tones, still my area is a little bit wet so I can move my watercolors painting with the very tip of the brush carefully with the edges so I'm not going out of the edges and as you can see my lightest part is very wide compared to the reference and it's better that it stays that way I can add a little bit more darkness to the shadow area but still the first layer we need to keep light we can always make darker. It is harder with watercolor, something to make lighter. I'm not using any white color, any white pigment. My white is paper. Nothing can be more lighter than the paper in watercolors. So we are reserving light area in the very beginning. The same approach, the same technique is done for the rest of the leaves. I'm painting each leaf separately, looking constantly at the reference, comparing where are lights, where are darks. Each leaf has different area of light and different area of shadow, because leaves are curved and light source is coming from one direction and it's hitting the surface of the leaves differently, just because the leaves are placed differently toward the light. Here on the other leaf example, I am showing you the same approach as I did for the first leaf.
Now that the first layers for all leaves are done, we can continue to the second layer, which will be also applied in the same manner with a fine synthetic brush, starting from the shadow area towards the lightest part, gradually making transitions. I'm loading my brush with pigment, removing some excess amount on the paper towel and with the fine brush strokes adding more darkness. I'm not going straight, very dark, very saturated. It will only leave painting looking flat. We are painting transparently, lightly, but with many layers. This will allow our painting to look realistic. It will allow all the light source shine through all watercolor layers. Watercolor is a transparent medium which is putting through light. But if you are painting very saturated with very dark color mixes, that way we are blocking the light to shine through all those layers. Even if I apply transparently 10, 20 layers, all layers will be visible when the light is shining. So it's important to paint transparently, lightly, with many layers. That way you will get more realistic, more beautiful result. After a layer of fine brush strokes, I'm taking round synthetic brush, loading my brush with very, very transparent amount of watercolor mixes, sap green, ultramarine blue and lemon yellow. And I make a very, very transparent glaze over dry surface. This, it's important that the surface is completely dry and this glazing is very light. So I'm keeping the lightest part light, but I'm slightly smoothing the layer underneath. I'm not completely smoothing fine brush strokes. I'm carefully sinking them in into the paper, leaving some brush strokes visible. Some are more smoother. And the light is light. I did the same for the other leaves as well. Now the surface is again dry. And I can move to the next layer with finer brush strokes, adding more darker brush strokes to the shadow area. I'm building contrast and I'm mostly painting in the shadow area and slightly making transitions to the half tones and lightest parts. I'm not touching at this stage light area. It's better to keep it light for as long as possible. We can always go darker. That's not a problem. The problem will be if you will go too fast, too dark and lose the light, lightest parts. look in the reference the more I start to notice some details for example this leaf on the right sa side has a very very thin dark edge line not all leaves have this la darker line but only few of the leaves the more we study the reference the more we start to see things 
it always happens like that the more we look the more we see in the first we didn't notice some details we didn't notice some tonal changes or some texture lines it's important to constantly look at your reference or if you have a real subject in front of you study it carefully here I'm with a finer tip brush I'm smoothing the inner part of that fine line to make a smooth transitions towards the uh, the leaf part now again layers are dry and I'm taking a very small amount of ultramarine blue pigment loading my round synthetic brush and glazing over the lightest parts I'm adding cooler color tone to the lightest parts because light is cool and shadow is warm very light amount very transparent amount of ultramarine blue don't overwork here with very saturated color mix the effect will be what we need only with very thin layer of ultramarine blue or any other blue you can use manganese blue cobalt blue very very small amount Now I'm adding lemon yellow and sap green to my darker color mix which is left on a color palette and a little bit of perlin green. I will add this very warm color mix to the shadow area because I feel that I need a little bit of warmth in the shadow. We are building contrast as well with the color temperatures. The light is cool and the shadow is warm smoothing applied layer still keeping light area light and slowly building layers of contrast of watercolor layers the more layers are added the more realistic painting starts to look now I'm at the finishing stage, adding final details to this painting. Full tutorial is available on my Patreon, link is down below. This is an amazing practice for realistic painting and to practice leaf painting. Don't choose in the beginning of your art journey, don't choose very complicated leaves and compositions. Start from something simpler and you will be more enjoyed by the process and by the result. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my tutorials. Hope you learned something new and see you in my next videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.